Building 2026 is going through an immense amount of construction. The largest construction effort on the building since it was originally built back in 1964. All of this is to make it ready for large-scale U-233 processing and thorium extraction. And here's how they'll do it. A majority of processing will take place in the heavily shielded hot cells. Before they can be used though, they need to be cleaned out. All five cells have a large amount of radiological contamination, so personnel have to put on a full suit of special protective gear before they can enter the hot cells. To enter, first they have to pull back a 36,000 pound concrete wall. All the old equipment from previous work done in the cells is taken out. The cell pan, which serves as the floor of the hot cell, is then taken out and stored in a large shielded container because of the high amount of contamination on it. When measuring it with the frisker, the clicking sound that signals radiological contamination is so loud and constant, it can be heard clear across the room. The walls and floor of the hot cell are cleaned with a glue-like substance to prevent the spread of contamination. A new cell pan is then installed. For the hot cells that will handle U-233 processing, all the new processing equipment is placed on the cell pan. The other cells will handle the dividing of the canisters into workable sizes, so they get a different set of equipment. These cells will also have a new, easier to access entry portal installed to replace the burden of opening a 36,000 pound concrete wall every time a canister is put inside or taken out. And finally, the old remote manipulators are pulled out and replaced with new state-of-the-art ones with more carrying capacity. Manipulators are used to handle material inside the hot cells without having to go inside. All of this will be done to each of the five hot cells getting renovated in building 2026, but that's not all that's being renovated. Room 138 used to just be an empty space, but it's going to play a big part in the U-233 downblending process. First off, a huge hole is being cut into the west wall so a 10 foot by 10 foot roll up door can be put in. This door is needed because two 30 ton tanks will be used inside the room to gather the downblended U-233 during processing. To be able to move such a heavy structure in and out of the room though, the floor has to be leveled off and an air pallet and air compressor will be installed. The air compressor will suck air into its container and pressurize it. That pressurized air will then be expelled downwards out of the air pallet, causing it and the tank on top of it to hover off the ground slightly. With the 30 ton tank essentially being weightless on the pallet, it can be moved in and out of the room easily by operators. One of the reasons the tanks will be so heavy is because they'll be filled with cement to solidify the downblended U-233. There's currently no efficient way to fill a 500 cubic foot tank with cement, so a two-story tall cement silo outside of room 138 is being built as well. The silo will store the cement and then transfer it into the tanks to mix with the downblended material inside them, solidifying it and making it safe for transportation and disposal. <laughs> The scope of construction and upgrading to facilities is unprecedented in the project's history. And this is just the start of the work. The real work comes when U-233 starts being processed and thorium extracted in the hot cells. And you'll see how that's done in the next video.